This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helvin. Cheers, memory heart. Wow, guys, we are recording uh, on the Lord's Day. On the Lord. Well, oh, yeah, I forget that it's the Lord's Day. It's Sunday fun day because we were oh. really into football because of our fantasy league yeah this year. yeah i what's so interesting <laughs> is i asked people on patreon i'm not on patreon on my instagram what we should talk about yeah. and someone was like what what's going on with the fantasy league elliot's so into it well elliot he, is kicking ass <laughs> he's doing really really well and he really wants to take on katie our friend who she's is dominating dominating it. dominating <laughs> Uh, yeah, Philadelphia Kegels was doing well. High highs, hmm. low lows. Well, I am officially out of the playoffs. Ah, uh, the didn't tightest even, end. Didn't even know there was a playoff. Didn't know, I, this has all been a learning curve for me. Chip had <laughs> texted on the group thread the other day being like, should we allow more than six people into playoffs? Or and like, I was like, what is this Or mean? like there's normally more, you know, and I was just like, wait, what do you mean? My season's over? Which is... <laughs> sad because the only two people i'm doing better than mm -hmm. then i know have not looked at the app in like four yeah months. they don't touch it yeah. they don't touch it at all <laughs> like jacqueline the one time i played her she had like three players on a bye week yeah. and like two of them were, and then Same. two more injured so i'm like you're telling me that like i'm only doing better than people who have that just could be absent that basically forfeited <laughs> yeah, then could be bots at this I'm, point I'm livid. <laughs> no, this was a learning curve. Mm. We were all learning. Look, at the, like everyone has joked, this league has had um, has done things differently from the start. There's That's normally true. not an odd number of people in a league, and <laughs> normally people don't have to have bye weeks <laughs> every week, which is what we've all shared. Okay, this league. <laughs> but here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like you said, it has been a learning year. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. We people signed up for this not knowing even what it was on draft day. Oh, yeah. I think Katie might be the only one and Corey, according to Corey Cool, what I heard him saying of on Psycho podcast, Babble fame. That, yeah, he's like a dark horse, but not really. He's actually a light horse that knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Little Piggy Girls knows what's up. Yeah. Um, no, when we were starting the league and I was starting to send out the text, yeah. Katie did say, just FYI, like, I do kind of know football. She was texting with us, giving the points breakdown of the way you get points mm -hmm. which i have not known this entire time i just no. look at it and see the little decimals going up and i'm we like we love it look that guy did something but, but next year i really feel like i want to take it seriously mm -hmm. i want to like have my draft plan i also think it'd be very fun even though we have two uh members in texas to do like a draft in person yeah that'd be fun that'd be super fun so that we can poke each other when someone's taking a long time a really long time <laughs> But so uh, for those who asked, how's it going? N n in the words of Dorinda, not good, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, Clip. I mean, not good. I am out of the playoffs, but Elliot is kicking ass. Good he's for him. The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, he's doing really well. Um, mine is really like my gambling. It's either I'm yeah. winning really a lot or I'm not even close. When you're hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Or not, not, not. That's it. Um, but it's been fun to watch the games it because has. of this. Yeah. Listen. So this is Sunday fun day for us. So will you go home after this and watch football? Probably not because oh. the Eagles play on Monday night. So mm. I will watch the Eagles on Monday night. Wow. Yeah. They, oh man, they suffered a tough loss last this, week. This is our sports pod. Hey, welcome. I know sports. <laughs> Eagles are doing well, though. They're doing well overall, which you, is exciting. You guys thought that we were going to start doing a reality podcast? Mm -hmm. No. Just no. just two girls talk talking about sports. Talking nonsense, wrong information about sports. Absolutely okay. wrong. Um. But anyway, we're here with our large water glasses. Yeah. Love to see it. And I'm still nursing coffee from this morning. Mm. I did a little Bucks run. Um, did you get like a holiday flavor? Tis the season. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I thought I went crazy because I got crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought I went crazy because I got one pump of sugar-free vanilla and I was like, Ooh. well, look Spice who's uh, being a little unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, that does sound fun. It is fun. You know, I was going to do one stevia and I yeah. said, what do you got sugar free these days? Nice. They said just vanilla. I was like, hit me. Nice. <laughs> um, it was fantastic. Um, 
But anyway, something happened to me today that is, I don't know why I'm still holding this. Yeah, like, like, does it have to do <laughs> with this little thing, this cup that has is become that, precious now? Yeah, where's, there's not enough Jesus on this cup. Remember how there are always those fights about yeah. like Starbucks is ugh, oh, man. taking the Christ out of Christmas? <laughs> um, anywho. Something happened to me today at the Bucks that what? I couldn't believe. What? A phenomenon I've always heard of. Okay. So I'm waiting. A guy's taking forever. You know, the line is, it's a it's a tough spot for a Bucks because it's like, if there's more than four cars mm-hmm. at the drive-thru, like one is like out in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I've it's, seen it. It's a rough spot, yeah. you know? But anyway, I come up to the window mm-hmm. and the guy working the window goes, uh, the guy in front of you paid for you. <gasps> I wow. said, what? And then and then my mind went crazy. Okay, because here's why. In my head, I go, okay, and this is all happening yeah. in the span of like four seconds. Yeah, of course. I go, oh, really? And and I had gotten this and a tea, you know? So I yeah. was at about like a, like a $9 mark. So they already know what you've ordered to be able to pay the, yeah. okay, got it. Yeah, because I'm waiting behind him yeah. in line. So anyway, so I immediately go, did he do this? Because he took so long at the at the like the ordering oh, spot. Did he? Or is this one of those pay it forward things? Right. Yeah. And what if I am breaking a chain yeah. of generosity? Your karma's being challenged right now. I'm like I'm like, or what if he was just going, Oh, that girl was patient, which mm-hmm. I rarely am before my coffee. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm starting a chain. Right, right. I was lots of pressure either way. So much pressure, yeah. dude. <laughs> it's it's not the gift you think it is. No, I <laughs> I really felt on the spot, right? Because I also like didn't know right. if the people behind me, you know, what if that was a PA and he yeah. was getting a coffee order for thirty people? Right. You're not like, lots of breakfasts. You weren't ready to anticipate a good deed. No, I've heard about these moments, <laughs> and I. <laughs> was frozen i mean i was like oh um i said do i need to do i do do i do that too and he was like whatever I, you know what i mean like yeah you know it's kind of like when people like, try to start the wave right. like some people are gonna be like i'm not doing that shit like chip would have been like what no thanks for the free call, oh, call brew i would have immediately <laughs> been like i have to out nice this nice thing yeah. that has been su- that has now surprised me and caught me off guard at a place that i just want comfort and uh-huh. coffee i'm like i'm like i could get in my car go to this starbucks go through drive through and come home with a blindfold yeah and all of a sudden uh. i'm throwing a, a, a grenade you're thrown off your equilibrium i was sweating i was just like <laughs> oh i go do, do, am I, do, do i do i do i do i do that <laughs> he just turned into a little cartoon character and you know that this guy has like seen other people yes. be like i don't want to do that you know what i mean or whatever it is or just accept it and say thank you yeah <laughs> well i was like oh thanks so much and then a um, second later i was like you did know, you, staring into my steering wheel and then going like, what do I, what's my move? Did you pay for the car behind you? So I said, do I do that? He goes, I mean, if you want to. And I yeah, go, I love that you asked him. Like, I there's did. an actual protocol <laughs> for this situation. I did. I, was, I mean, because think of, there's probably a lot of times someone tries to start it. Right. But, and, yeah. it, and it only goes one car. Yeah. There could be times it happened and they're like, well, I wanted to be like, What's the longest string of cars you've seen do this, right, man? Right, right. But now you're taking a long time. Right. And now you have to pay for the car behind you because they're being patient. So I go, do I do it? Do I do it? <laughs> and he goes, if you want to. And I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> do you think I want to figure out if I want to right now? I'm, I'm frozen. Yeah. I'm frozen. And he just goes, it's only five bucks. And I go, oh, I'm making money. I go, I'll pay for it. Because my order was like nine. There you go. And this is just one guy getting a drink. And then wow. I felt bad because I looked in my rear view and yeah. it was just one guy. And then, the, but the behind him was like a van. Mm. And I was like, this poor guy is yeah. going to feel pressure to buy the next order. Right. And you know they're getting breakfast sandwiches. Oh, for sure. And. Oh. The guy behind you <laughs> doesn't realize that you kind of got guilted into yeah. doing this for he him. I'm just a really nice white lady. He's like, that girl's flirting with me. Well, the one guy in front of me, it was just like, Did I didn't he make... do that out of the goodness of his heart or was it a domino effect on him? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think 
I don't like this is what I'm saying. <laughs> we shouldn't be allowed to do this. I, <laughs> On this holiday season, no. the one thing Mamrie has ruled out, out, out is charitable offers in the Starbucks line. The season of giving is giving me anxiety. <laughs> I truly, I felt like my brain broke. Because yeah, you're like, I haven't even bought all my Christmas gifts yet. No. I can't give to this stranger right I now. I was just like, enjoy your Frappuccino. You don't have to buy the entire minivan family <laughs> behind you. Yeah, can you send him this offer, but with a caveat yeah. that explains. I mean, it, it feels like the movie The Ring, where they're like. I haven't seen if, that. Oh, well, Which also, in my mind, I just went to, is that a. Sponsored by the security cameras? And no, stuff. no, no, but it should be. No, I, the ring is like, oh, is if you watch the this, the it'll curse you until, it's like one of those, like, you have to get someone else to watch it for the curse to be lifted ri- off of lifted. you. And that's how the Starbucks felt. I love that your reaction to a charitable <laughs> gift is that it's a curse I hate it upon you. You know I'm a giving person. <laughs> I just raised so much money for Choose Love. Oh, yeah. But this one coffee, oh, man. Sent I, you into a spiral. It was hell. I got, the season. I was so thrown off, Grace. Yeah. That I'm driving home, and I'm, I'm at a stoplight. Uh-huh. And I had one of those moments where, you know when you see a car that you think is a cop, but they just have a different color door? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. like, yeah, the rear view mirror <laughs> has been knocked off, and there's a replacement one that's yeah. black, and you're like, yeah. that's a cop. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he knows I paid for the coffee. <laughs> so, so my brain is so broken that I see a car go by and it's like a Tercel, you know, uh, like it's a small car. It's black and it has like a white door. And I was like, oh, it's a cop. And then I was like, are cop cars black with white doors or white with black doors? <laughs> white with black doors. Is that what it is? I'm pretty sure. I could not in that moment. <laughs> Up was down, down was up. Picture what a cop car was. <laughs> he also put a tab of acid in your coffee yeah. as he paid for he it. He said, yeah, <laughs> this one's for her. So anyway, that was my morning. Wow, you've been yeah. thrown off. Tis so the off. season. Ugh. That is, um, yeah, I mean, a beautiful gesture, but when it's put on you, that's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Those Starbucks employees must see a lot of shit in I'm, that <laughs> <plane>. <laughs> like, The fear in my eyes. If I said to you, hey, how many subscriptions do you have? And can you list them all and how much money you're paying? Well, if you would have asked me that question before I started using Rocket Money, I would have said, yeah. And let me tell you, I would have been incredibly wrong. Okay, I cannot believe how many I had and all the money I was wasting, whether it was on apps or streaming services that I signed up for on a seven day trial basis and then never canceled or things that me and my boyfriend were both signed up for. Well, luckily there is Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending and helps lower your bills. You can see all your subscriptions in one place. And look, if I see something that I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. Uh Uh-huh. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money does it for me. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate Negotiate to lower bills for you by up to 20%. You guys, Rocket Money is like my bodyguard when it comes to streaming services and unwanted apps, and I absolutely will always love them. So all you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash TMGW. That's Rocket Money dot com slash tmgw rocketmoney.com slash tmgw come on you got nothing to lose except more money if you don't use rocket money don't kid yourself going to the grocery store over the holiday season is terrifying okay sure i know you want to get your ingredients for your holiday meal but what about all the other meals well that's when hello fresh can be your best friend okay a stress-free holiday season with the help of hello fresh so you can skip the grocery store and save time with easy tasty recipes delivered right to your door I'm telling you, it saves you so much brain power. All you do is you go on to your HelloFresh and there's so many menus, so many things to choose from that honestly, it's like my favorite type of online shopping. I'm obsessed with it. Plus, did you know HelloFresh does more than just dinners? From easy breakfast to start your morning off right to 10 minute lunches or satisfying snacks for adults and kids, HelloFresh has tasty choices for every meal time occasion. And best part, no grocery trip required, okay? You don't have to put on your armor. They've got over 45 recipes and more, and more than 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every single week, you guys. 
I love holiday food as much as the next person, but my palate gets tired. So this week I'm ordering stuff like Leban Tortelloni Palermo. Oh baby, what about some vegan curried roasted chickpea bowls with spice badmata and carrots and red pepper chutney? And the best part is it comes like perfectly proportioned. I am so bad at going to the grocery store and coming back and being like, oh, so it's just me and Chip and I bought enough food for 30 people. What a waste of food and also a waste of money. If you would like to give it a shot this holiday season, well, baby, we've got a deal for you. You go to HelloFresh.com slash TMGW free and use code TMGW free for free breakfast for life. Uh, yeah, that's one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash TMGW free with code TMGW free. Honey, that's not the only thing that's free. Your time is going to be free. Okay, you're welcome. That's the greatest gift of all this holiday season. <laughs> so are you still on your tea game? I'm still on my tea game. That's okay. why I, I'm, but I did like Elliot drinks coffee every morning. Mm-hmm. I actually I'm on a matcha game. I've been drinking right, the matcha matcha every morning, which is just so delightful and creamy with oat milk. I love oh, it. Look at but you. I do smell Elliot's coffee, and mm. every day I get a little bit closer to having a cup for myself. Are but you I resi- also, why resist? Well, I one I got off of drinking it just from like protecting my stomach because I, I think it was just like tearing my stomach lining up that was okay. already in bad shape okay so it's not and, that it stopped tasting good it stopped feeling well, good. i also couldn't really taste much but oh. um or it was just like a little wonky and different but also that um i don't have that fluttery anxiety that i oh. do think was happening when i was drinking coffee and now i drink like a matcha and then if i want i'll drink like a black tea and i don't have those um heart palpitations that i think i just let myself get used to we we just thought that was our resting state i thought i was existing my nervous system was just a nervous system and (laughs) (laughs) an aptly named system and the matcha and which still feels like a treat in the morning and also it's like i don't know there's something about like making it that takes a second that's kind of nice ritual. in the more it's it's become a ritual and it's also like makes me slow down a little bit mm. versus like i would just pour coffee into the biggest mug i could find so i would get the most yeah. amount immediately and then i'd refill it like every time for at least two to three cups in the mm. morning i i have a little bit of a ritual with the coffee because i grind my own beans see that's nice and pleasant and i try new and i try new like fancy brands yeah so i love that we uh, we have this one brand from Stumptown that we love so much Mm -hmm. and it is delicious and i think i will try some eventually because it just like smelling it this morning i was like that smells really nice it's like kind of chilly in los angeles the best part of waking up it really is but i will say this matcha is pretty great right now but also i've been on bender's of different food items throughout this process and different things of like hyper fixating mm, on like mm-hmm. eating banana pancakes every day. And are now, you doing are you on that right now? I was on that for ever because well they say that you know you should avoid your favorite foods in this process because your taste buds change wow. and also you'll associate them with the chemo and so you'll hate them down the line oh wow yeah so it was like but not oh, like people just foods just foods okay, not feel- people just foods <laughs> you should be surrounded by your favorite people you should leave out the favorite foods okay sweet uh and so i've been not really but also i can't nothing tastes normal to me right now like and i have a little bit of a metallic kind of thing in my mouth which i knew would happen but right I didn't realize that I really had that metallic flavor till I got this one pasta salad from <gasps> Gelson's Orzo salad that's pre-made in their deli that I no. love so much. And it's got like sun-dried tomatoes and eggplant and feta. And it's so delicious. And like, I love Damn. cold pasta. I want lunch. Oh, it's amazing. And then I tried it and I was like, this doesn't taste oh. like how I remember it. I could it. see how a sun-dried tomato could switch over to oh. aluminum it aluminum yeah aluminum yeah exactly. it was chewy aluminum in my mouth oh wow and um so i'm excited to get back to eating but i was loving uh banana pancakes because i found this mix that my mom told me about that has protein in it so i needed mm, protein protein pancakes What's and then up? i just like put 
a fuck ton of butter in the pan mm-hmm. and then they get crispy edges Ooh, around yeah, it so yeah, it's like yeah. a texture thing more than yeah. flavor but um that kick is a little bit gone i'm doing smoothies in the morning now look at her go look elliot's on a health kick of doing this workout beast body thing that which he is follows. the craziest he named hates that workout. name he hates the name he's okay. like it's so embarrassing to say that i'm doing beast body right now but his arms are like huge and it's very ins- i know i'm That's like hot. hello <laughs> um yeah <laughs> <laughs> Our house got fun. Wait, does he bulk up quickly though? Yeah, there's phases of this program that he's doing. So this is the bulking phase, I guess, and then it Whoa. goes where it, like stre- it'll like streamline Slim him out. Yeah, eventually. So he's just like two. <laughs> he's like two big arms <laughs> walking through the house. What's that cartoon? That's like the 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 dog with the two big arms. You know what I'm talking about? The Ibu Shibu. The Shibu, what? Never mind. <laughs> we won't even try to track this thing. I'm tra- wow. But okay. So, so you've got that. a guy who's getting fit as yeah. shit. And so he wanted to have smoothies in the morning. And then mm. I was like, man, I do need, I am basically in this process currently anemic because my blood cell count is yeah. like really low, um, which is very funny. I was at the doctor. Uh, I went to my general practitioner's office a couple weeks ago to make sure that I was okay for surgery coming up this week. Right. And so he runs a bunch of labs on me. And I haven't seen my general practitioner since before surgery I don't or even so have before one. chemo. Oh, yeah. There's so- not a person on <laughs> earth in the medical field right now that has <laughs> any, any feeling for me. Has any awareness of what's going on with your body. I'm a doctor <laughs> orphan. <laughs> yeah, no, I've had this guy since I moved out to Los Angeles. Like, so, and it was when I first started going to him, he's like, my daughters watch your videos like 10 years ago. <gasps> that's I was cute. like, oh, that's sweet. And also, you're gonna know some really personal things so about please, me. Please you know? don't tell. Please don't tell <laughs> please your don't daughters what my, my liver looks exactly, like. Exactly. That was like my liver is constantly uh, a question mark for you. Uh, but I haven't seen him since before I was diagnosed. So it's like seeing wow. a ghost from my past for the first time. But uh, and then one, I went in and during the exam, he was like, "You do look pale," and I was like, "I put on." like my darker foundation today so that I looked tan and healthy walking into his oh my office God. to be like, wow, look at her, a beacon of health right now. Oh, so that was really fun. But then I was also telling him that like, oh, there was a question at one point if my, um, during chemo from my oncologist, if my levels, my uh, white blood cell count went below a certain number, I would have to get a blood transfusion before oh this God. surgery. So that was a question mark leading up to my last round of chemo to see where my labs were. Okay. And I told my general practitioner, I was like, that was a question mark. And then we did the labs before my last round of chemo. And my oncologist was like, these are great numbers. Like your numbers look great. And then he went to look at them. He was like, oh, no, these are terrible numbers. <gasps> but for you, they are good numbers. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> because my blood cell count is still low, but it's not in the danger zone low. Okay, but I am in anemic level low. Mm-hmm. So I was looking up in the meantime. Like it's supposed to get better the further out I get from chemo. But in the meantime, I was just like, how do I get those numbers up? And it's leafy greens, like leafy kale and spinach. Greens. So I've been putting spinach in my smoothies in the morning. More so than like eating a steak. I think that too. Like, this is all, I can figure it out after I get surgery. But yeah. in the meantime, I was like, you know what? I really have not had any vegetables for mm. like four months yeah. like in this process. Good for you. <laughs> so I'm getting slowly back into health, nourishment a little bit. And that's um, smoothies in the morning. But then we it. get high at night and I eat everything that we have in the house. Okay. So okay. It's a little imbalance. We're starting the day off so well. And then it just sort of but goes downhill. But Little by little. Who starts the day off bad and then improves it? You know what I mean? Like if you start the day off and you're like, I'm having a freaking Bloody Mary and a waffle or like whatever, like you're probably locked in (laughs) to eating like shit the rest of the day. Like I, if I'm like, you know, if I'm going to have pizza at lunch, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, let's do a salad at dinner. I'll, mm. I should, I know, but I'll that's... go, the day's ruined. Who gives a fuck? Party for everyone. <laughs> I know. And in the mental health community, people are trying to encourage people to think of their days in sections. Segments. Yeah. So it's like, if you do start bad, that's just the morning segment. The afternoon segment, you can uh, start over for yourself. As far as I'm concerned, you're fucked. You're fucked. Enjoy <laughs> the ride. Oh, speaking of food. Yeah. Because that's all I do. Uh-huh. Um, so I came back from Northern California. Mm-hmm. on Thursday morning and uh came home and my dishwasher wouldn't turn on yeah that's annoying. like the, no light no anything and I had like 
a full friggin Ooh. like I thought I hit start you yeah. know before I yeah. left so I was like oh now I have like oh. dish, dirty dishes that have been in there a week that are like fossilized that I need to like clean by hand oh 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 Ooh, I mean that's not fun luckily nothing was like rotten or anything rotten. yeah rotten. nothing was rot rotten <laughs> Nothing was rotten. I sound like I'm reading an audible book. Yeah, you do. Luckily, nothing was rotten when she went into the dishwasher. Um, but still, I was doing those dishes. Yeah. Grace, I felt like I was, I felt like a, a freaking, what are they called? <laughs> With the people in, the people in Pennsylvania. Oh, Amish person. I felt like an Amish person. Yeah. I was like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> It's kind of like how I always vo- voice to text because now like actual yeah. texting feels like so. Your forearms were like, we don't do this. I was like, this is <laughs> awful. So anyway, that sucked. But then I, I experimented with a bunch of recipes on Friday for the nice. cookbook and I was like having a good time. And then Saturday morning, I look at, oh no, Friday morning, I, I was like, wait, why is, why is my freezer like a little drippy? And like the door had been getting stuck occasionally. Yeah. So I was like, oh no, did I like leave it open? Yeah. I close it and I'm like, well, oh, it says it's like 40 degrees. So I was like, oh, okay, let me make sure it's secure. I must have yeah. not realized I left it open. All I have in there was like fruit for smoothies. Yeah. And, and, but you know, a lot of giant ice cubes. Yeah. You have a lot of big ass <laughs> artisanal <laughs> ice cubes in there that are precious. <laughs> they were, they were completely water. Oh, but I was no. like, come on, buds, come back. <laughs> so anyway. So I was like, all right, we'll see if the numbers come up. Yeah. Number never uh, goes down. Oh, no. I needed the opposite of your white blood cell count. I know. <laughs> and never came back up. Oh, no. So I have, to, I have to call my landlord and be like, hey, in addition to the friggin' dishwasher, yeah. now my freezer's broken. So your whole kitchen's revolting. That is, you know, we're going into a retrograde. Is that what it is? And that's a technology is going to be wily. So be careful. Well, and also make sure you check, double check all of your like travel plans. Well, it was crazy. So I was like, this sucks. Yeah. So he was, you know, saying, well, because he owns this house with like another guy. Yeah. And he was like, well, okay, we'll come on Sunday. He's coming after this. Mm-hmm. He's like, we'll come on Sunday. He just got a new fridge at his house. The other one is like, nice. It's like yours. Because that's yeah. like a 10-year-old fridge. Yeah. He was like, so we'll just swap them out and, and like take the other one out to try to see if it can get fixed. Okay. Rather than me just like not having a fridge. Yeah, that's like, nice. Beans is fridge. Beans is food is refrigerated. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you guys need a, co- a cooling system. Yeah, it's not just that I'm being like, you know, picky. <laughs> And want artisanal ice. So anyway, and then I wake up this morning. So I clean out the entire fridge last night. Damn. Couldn't tell you last time I did that. Good for you. Was that um, horrific? Horrific. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, how did... I did see... Man, uh, yeah, I follow a lot of these like uh, food uh, girlies on Instagram now. And one of them was talking about cleaning out your fridge weekly. And it makes it less of a daunting task overall for when that once a year... Yeah, but some, you're getting surprised with shit left and left right. Left and right. So, th- but those girlies, I also fell into a TikTok hole one day where, like, this bitch was like curating her fridge with like, there was a picture of there was a framed picture of her cat in there in the inside the fridge. Like, it, she was trying to start the trend of like my, be- my beautiful, fr- like you know, like every egg is in like a beautiful carrier, and then she puts flowers to remain in the fridge, and like so, what? like when she opens her fridge, it's like beautiful. <laughs> I was like, there's a framed photo of your cat in there. What? Is I'll find it and send it to you. I was I was like Gen Z has gone too far. They're they're pranking us. We're that romanticizing our lives a little too much <laughs> yeah. when you need your fridge to have an aesthetic. So anyway, um I cleaned out the whole damn fridge. Damn. It was a nightmare. When I tell you like just from hosting people yeah. at various times, I must have pulled out three cases worth of beer and white cloth. <laughs> I have two huge tote bags, right? Oh, no, yeah. But, but then also just throwing away stuff you haven't thought about, like uh-huh. condiments. So many condiments. Condiments do go bad eventually. They do go bad, but also you'll have the big things where you go, oh, this needs to be recycled. So now, yeah. so it's washing them out yeah, yeah, because they're just heavy as is. Yep. Grace, I occasionally like a Gibson, which is a gin, like a gin martini, but with a pickled onion yeah. instead of an olive. Mm-hmm. I had three jars of pickled onions. <laughs> I know that game, though, where you go to the store and you can't remember if it's in your fridge. I was I was draining. I drained a six pack <laughs> of House of Love RuPaul hard <laughs> seltzer. From three years ago. I had no idea. 
I had some coconut, like spiked coconut water. I was Amazing. like, what the fuck is this? And when did I, when did I buy preserved lemons? Yep. And it was a trip. Wow. But I did it and I felt better. Um, but then I put like the essentials I needed that I just bought. Yeah. You know what I mean? From yeah. testing stuff in there. And then I woke up this morning and my fridge is at 50 and the freezer's at 60. So I got to <gasps> say goodbye to everything. I couldn't salvage Wait, so one thing. The fridge is broken too and the freezer. <gasps> what? So now. Sad. My Very entire sad. kitchen. Is revolting. Is against revolting against me. The, oh, then that's your safe space. Uh, <laughs> I, I said I was like, um, it's Christmas in a week, and I'm writing a cookbook. Yeah, I need a fucking kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. So anyway, but it was, they're replacing it today. They're well, not the dishwasher. I'm still in Amish country. Okay. At the time being, but you know, it's one of those things where I don't own this house. Yeah. So I have to be like, go get some paper plates. Well, oh no, I have to be like, okay. If you try to replace my shit with bad stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then like now I'm gonna have to be like, no, we. I need a, yeah. a decent. Something what are they works. called? Appliances, Appliance. and and I'll pay for half. You know. So yeah. I'm just figuring it out. This is not what I needed before Christmas. <laughs> no, you seem stressed. <laughs> you got some <laughs> stress. Going. You have surgery, and you're beating cancer, and I'm like <laughs> three jars of pickled onions. <laughs> you know what it is. It is me telling you that Audible is one of the greatest things to ever happen in my life. I have been a personal customer of Audible for, I don't know, like nine years. I think Audible is one of my longest running friendships. If you haven't tried it, I feel like the holiday season is the perfect time to get up in there, okay? Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You're always gonna find the best of what you love and also some new stuff to discover. They've got audiobooks across every genre. They've got bestsellers, new releases, you know when you go to the, the the bookstore and they're like out of that new hot cool book you want to read? Well, guess what? You can listen to it. There is an endless amount. They've got celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness. Hey, who couldn't use some motivation and wellness at the top of the year? Business and more. Plus, they've also got podcasts. Yeah, thousands of podcasts from popular favorites to exclusive new series, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances. I am always seeing celebrities, comedians, actors that I love announce something and I go, oh, what channel is that on? Oh, it's on Audible. It's a new Audible uh, uh, drop. I absolutely love it. There is hours and hours and thousands of hours of entertainment. You got to check it out. Last month when we were doing our book club for this podcast, Red, White, and Royal Blue, honey, I was switching between the book and the audiobook on Audible when I was taking my walk. And let me tell you, that narrator could seamlessly go from an American accent to a British accent. I'm telling you, I had the best time. So as an Audible member, what you're going to do is you're going to choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including including latest bestsellers and new releases. The Audible app makes it so easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, walking, sitting at your gate in the airport while your flight continues to be delayed. Oh, you are gonna have the best time. So if you wanna give it a shot, which I highly recommend, visit audible.com slash TMGW or text TMGW to 500-500. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. It's the word on everyone's lips. I'm talking about microdosing. You have probably heard of it or you've probably heard someone else talk about it. But you know that just right feeling when your body and mind are really at peace? Like after you've done a big workout or a nice long shower where you're relaxed, but you're focused and a little energized, you're in the zone. Well, microdosing can do exactly that. It can help you get into that mindset easier and stay there longer. It's there for all kinds of things, whether you want a little mood booster, you know, a little relaxation, maybe relieve some anxiety or some muscle tension, a little spicing up some sex life, or what's really fun is to have a little half a gummy and just sit down and try to think of a new story to write on your computer. Yeah, I'm talking microdosing to help your focus and creativity. It's worked for me. I've used them for both, mm, you know, fun times, maybe being, being a little more focused during cornhole over Thanksgiving, or just sitting down at my computer when I need a little bit of a boost. For me, a tiny dose of THC, a micro dose, if you will, has been great. You know, I don't, 
I smoke weed by myself, but man, a little a little half a gummy and we are off to the races. So to learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code TMGW to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Again, that's microdose.com with code TMGW. Microdose.com, TMGW for 30% off your order. Give it a shot. It might be pretty good for you. Oh, okay. Here's um, I'll give you a recommendation for something you can watch that'll make you feel better. Oh. Um, I posted about this on my story. There's a new series called Science Fair: The Series that Wait, our friend Katie, Katie produced. That we're talking about in our uh, kicking our ass fantasy football. She is a producer on it. Yeah. This, so I was like, oh, I saw it on her story, and I was like, this looks right up my alley. A Hell docu series yeah. about kids competing in the international science fair. Hell yes. Are I think they really nerdy? I mean, they're like, so I, great. Is there a list? They involved? are the most inspiring. There's a girl from Zimbabwe. There's Kit. She, Katie worked with the kids that are from Florida that are featured on there. There's I love it. kids all over the U S there's kids from Puerto Rico. It is, I don't know how they found this like group of kids. They are so inspiring. They are so interesting. They have, they have really difficult lives, yeah. a lot of them, and they just want to change the world. Oh, my God. And it's so, like... Am I going to cry? Like, how you quickly might cry. will I cry? I cried. Might? I cried. I cry a lot. You're going to cry like, a lot. Okay. I cried a lot towards... <laughs> it's only three episodes. I oh, okay. wish there were more, and the whole like i burned through it immediately i was like texting her being like i love this she's like i worked with this kid and this oh, kid I'm like, i was wondering if you that texted kid her with the delorean <laughs> <gasps> yeah so it's amazing these okay. kids are geniuses but they're also like hearts of gold yeah like you just root for them so much and i truly like these are the kids that are going to change the world like they yeah. are looking at the problems in our society like that are personal and relevant to them and their families and where they live and they are just like fixing them or trying to and it is mind blowing because I am not a science well, person. Well I was going to ask you because when I see these science fairs mm -hmm. and you know obviously that's at a big level it's like people are actually creating innovations yes. and like and actually thinking of new ways of doing something. Yeah. I think I was in one science fair. Yeah. In elementary school, and this was early elementary school. Yeah. And I think I just made like a beautiful display of shells with like labels. You want to know what I was my... like? That's this kind of shell. I didn't invent anything. My seventh grade science fair project. Do you want to know what it was? Of course I do. Our horoscopes real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That is so I, on brand. I I know if you wow. like. I went to Kmart and I bought these little books of horoscopes that were assigned to each sign of my family members, <gasps> and I made a chart from one to ten, and I gave them pieces of paper and said, "You have to mark off one through ten of accurate to not accurate." Oh my god! Of your daily horoscopes. They didn't do it. I asked my brother, and he would just like <laughs> fill in whatever. But think about it, like for a science fair, yeah. I'm asking, is this Horoscope? metaphysical uh, study real? <laughs> like my little brother did something about magnets. Like I remember yeah. one year walking into the living room and my mom was just hooked to two magnets. <laughs> <laughs> and, like that was his uh, science fair project. And mine was just like going to Joanne's Fabrics craft yeah. store and getting the coolest looking board that, that I could get going for it. And I got, I remember being so upset that I didn't get a good grade on it, but I see now. Yeah. You know, I was never meant to be a science kid. No, Grace, I think I've talked about this like either in a book or sometime that when I was in eighth grade, because mm -hmm. I went to an elementary school that it was K through eighth. Like there was yeah. no, at that point, now they're lucky, but there was no junior high. So yeah. I'd watch like Boy Meets World and things and be like, God, I wish I could. <laughs> Instead, I'm like saying, what's up to kindergartners, yeah, you know? Yeah. But so I started a science club uh -huh. and it was like me and eight girls uh -huh. and only did it to throw events during like Earth Day yeah. week <laughs> to get out of class. Yeah, I got out of class for like a whole week. Amazing. I mean, we had them come, but like, they learned nothing they came i made like one of those volcanoes and was just like check it out this is when you mix these two things and they were like okay and, and we made those like we made those like gummy worms and dirt dessert yeah we we're like that's not science at Here, all but here's, here's a worm. two facts about worms <laughs> like, i actively remember teachers we were like you know made an announcement teachers bringing their class to this and being like 
why are we <laughs> yeah what's going on i created a performance we did like a sketch show <laughs> in the multi-purpose room and i remember performing a sketch i mean god fever dream i'm getting like yeah. anxiety i remember performing a sketch about how pluto had recently been like not considered a planet yeah i got demoted while lip syncing to hit the road jack yep. <laughs> yep. again everyone was like why aren't we in class? <laughs> yeah, where is the science? <laughs> this little girl seems to just want to do a one-woman <laughs> show. <laughs> they were just doing a cabaret <laughs> about the magma and molten layers of the earth. And the science is incorrect. <laughs> it's totally wrong. I'm like, cumulus clouds, stratosphere clouds. <laughs> like, this is not science uh, club. But it's... That kind of stuff <laughs> that makes me thankful for the kids featured in this documentary. Yes, it was like these the kids are in the right uh, path. It's also uh, to me, it's just like I freaking love watching young people so mm. aligned with their passions that you're like yeah, these jealous. kids know exactly what they want to do, and it's not because they have to; it's because they love it. Right, and it's so and it's so pure, and so it's so feel good. This is on Hulu and Disney Plus. I just loved it. No sponsorship at all. No, I literally just a friend worked on it. Katie, you did a fantastic job. Woo-hoo! The whole thing. I wish, 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 wish that this would turn into like a hard knocks where every year we follow <gasps> more kids. Maybe it could. That's, I want to put that out into the universe that I wish this would become because the science fair this one that they compete at called isef which i-s-e-f i think international um, science institute of they go something like fun. that something like that but they all know and it also like that is where they can compete for scholarships because a lot of these kids are oh. from like poor families is that what the reward is yeah the scholarships it's like 50 grand or 75 grand in scholarship money for wow. these kids but it's like tough it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids so no horoscopes and no just labeled no horoscopes, seashells no are horoscopes real <laughs> what a hypothesis what there's absolutely no way a 14 year old girl can prove no that. <laughs> and if you could like you would be incredibly famous like, like for that it's discovery. not science it's not science it's not. at all i don't know how my science teacher let me even go forward with well, that hypothesis but the thing is <laughs> since it's it takes its facts or whatever or its yeah. findings from where how the planets are aligned. I could see right? baby Look, Grace being like, but it's about planets. And I grew up and I love astrology now. So like I was aligned early on. You just were. was in the wrong class <laughs> that it was expressed. Oh, here's the thing. Have you watched uh The Garden, Commune or Cult? No. Wait, I'm writing this I down. I crushed it in two days. The Garden? No, because I've been watching cult documentaries. It's on HBO Max. And essentially what it is, like, I won't spoil it. Yeah. Um, and, like, I enjoyed it. It wasn't insane or anything. Yeah. But it's in real time. It's essentially there's this community called The Garden. Okay. That was, like, in Tennessee and has, like, I don't know, 30, 40 members, okay. whatever. You know, and it's, it's you know, they, they all make their decisions together. Yeah. They all live on the land they all you know yeah uh, like a commune yeah but they're moving to have more lands like in like i don't know michigan or something like that so they're gonna be bigger Mm -hmm. and so what it does though is it follows i guess if someone wants to join it Uh they do a 10 day trial and then the the group decides if they can stay or not whoa like a weird audition process yeah and the creepiest part is Uh instead of like raising your hand if you want them to stay someone counts down from 10 and it's a silent vote so they sit there for 10 seconds and if no one speaks up then it's like that's the, so stressful the 10 seconds all i'd want to do is scream i know I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> but anyway the cool thing about it is that they have in each episode or like they probably have like four people they follow okay. that are coming for their 10-day trial and seeing if those people are like this is a fucking cult. So Whoa. there's like a guy who goes who clearly is just like a prepper. Okay. And like isn't into hippie stuff at all. Uh-huh. And like, you know, uh, no spoilers. But so you're getting different perspectives. I mean, there's uh, there's someone who joins it who like, again, no spoiling. But like <sighs> by the end, he like kind of wants to lead it. Whoa. And I you're like, just... oh, are you coming here to learn how to be a cult leader? Oh, man. I just got the book Cultish, too, that people have recommended to me. That's all about, like, how things become cults and how people um, 
uh, get into those mindsets. Yeah. So it's commune Damn. or cult. Com- okay. I can't wait to watch it um, because I haven't been able to mother God. Oh, I watched it. It's so I've only gotten through two up. episodes. I can't get through the third episode because I'm like, this woman's just a drug an alcoholic. Addict. Yeah, yeah. She's just an alcoholic drug yeah, addict. And we're just watching her die. No, well, spoilers, guys. Spoiler, just, right. I yeah. mean, but also, no, you I don't know, know if the first five tra- minutes she's dead. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's crazy. It's it, crazy. Well, I mean, there's so many cult docs happening right now. It's very much in the zeitgeist. I know. I know we talked about it before of being like, how are there yeah. still so many cults happening? There's like tens of thousands of them still all throughout the United States, oh. at least. Well, that was kind of depressing. So let's end on this. <laughs> um, someone asked us on Instagram, what do you think is the best soup? Ooh, I'm in a- <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, am, I am in my soup season okay. right now. We love this. Oh, God. What is the best soup? It's tough. I mean, the most reliable soup is a good chicken noodle. And oh. I, because, I mean, at least that's just what I think of. Uh, that's what I used to think of a lot of, like, when go-to, go-to soups. And mm. I have this one recipe I use called, like, flu fighter chicken noodle soup. Yeah. And they put hot sauce and soy sauce in it. And it's just so good. It's got a great kick. But I love that, like, Italian wedding soup that has little meatballs <gasps> the in little it. little meatballs. And, like, couscous in it. Mm-hmm. That, to me, is so delicious. And I've never mm. made it on my own. And I wanted... That was... You just reminded me on my little to-do list in my head. <laughs> well, um, Italian I'd soup. like to try and make that myself instead of buying it in cans or uh, pre-made stuff at grocery stores. I think you just got a new video. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. I forgot that. I really wanted to make that soup. Uh, Elliot loves a good broccoli cheddar. But he, I also, but he loves a broccoli cheese combo across the board because yeah. that's his favorite casserole too. Exactly. He loves cheese. We love a creamy, love a cheese. cheesy, anything. Um, I was making... Potato, like baked potato soup. During- now, is that just is that just mashed potatoes with more vegetable stock in it to thin it, it out? Well, during chemo, <laughs> basically, but during chemo, like I couldn't eat like right. very adventurous things. So there's like a recipe for um, potato soup that's basically just potatoes and like coconut cream so oh. it's not heavy cream i do that with my butternut squash yeah. soup. yeah and then you can put like bone broth and stuff in wow. it so it's it was great for like having a different type of food to mm-hmm. try but wasn't that you know flavorful but mm-hmm. regular baked potato soup is so delicious yeah. i was trying to make it um a couple weeks ago and Damn. just like the accoutrements of putting cheese and do sour do this, cream do do the and chives? chives yeah okay so you dress oh. it like a baked potato like a baked potato and it's so fun wow but i love so those are what come to mind for me right now what about you well see the tough thing is is that I'd say the soup that I eat the most yeah. is like pho and ramen. Yes. Now, I don't make those. Right. So uh, part of the appeal is that like that's an ancient, ancient, yep. an ancient art that like, yeah. oh, uh, we're going to go get ramen. Yeah. This this fucking broth has been simmering for three days, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and has some family secrets. Um, But now that you're talking about all these like very Pinterest American mm-hmm. feeling soups. Yeah. I'm starving. I know. <laughs> I know. I know that I'm like. What soup should I, I make today? Now I wanted to look up more soups. Oh, I do have an idea. Yeah. Which I'm going to play around with um, for the cookbook. Okay. I mean, I keep, I, I keep adding ideas and things where you're just like, bitch. Rain it in. Rain it in. <laughs> like the table of contents cannot change every day. Yeah. But I had this. It came from a pun. Mm. And I had that moment where you're like, oh, my God, I just invented something. Yeah. And then you look it up and you're like, two other people have done this. <laughs> okay. That sucks. But I love matzo ball soup, right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's another one. Forgot about it. I mm-hmm. recently learned how to make tortillas. Okay. So I have like a bag of masa. Uh-huh. And I was like, could you do an masa ball soup? <gasps> because when you think about it, like tamales uh-huh. are like steamed masa right and i love tamales yeah me too so it could be like a combo well, it's, uh, so it's together. kind of like a tamale but in a matzo ball form and literally my mouth is full of know, spit know, like i'm just literally salivating right now like i just swallowed an entire <laughs> gallon of spit in my mouth being like oh i'm literally salivating <laughs> so i was thinking of making a very like herb rich like green mexican yeah. kind of soup with like with like the masa balls you Give gotta it. try. I gotta at try least, it. At least oh. you can't live like that. Maybe I'll try it tonight. <laughs> yeah. Nothing requires a fridge. There you go. Okay. Oh my god. You just got a great 
Uh, <sighs> I want to follow this journey and see how this turns out. <laughs> okay, no. I'll let you know. Well, guys, we um are doing a perv stream on Patreon, and we are That's now... That's a tear on our Patreon, oh, yeah, by yeah. the way. I forget. Yeah. We say it like it's... Not the craziest word to just throw in the sentence. Know. After but. this week where that guy got railed on the Senate floor, mm. the hearing house. You saw that, right? No. What? Oh, Elliot's s- been talking to me. Does it have to do with UAPs? Is no. it the UFO bill? No. Oh, okay. No, it's, mind. That's it's the a, only thing about government I've heard about It's a senator's aide fully like, like bent over and got fucked on the Senate floor and like live streamed it or like sent it to his close friends on Instagram. What? It's crazy. What? It's crazy. We were ending on soup, and it was so nice. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, we have a tier on our Patreon called Pervs, and we do a live stream with them, and we are absolutely so fucking late. So late for it. So Um, so if you're interested in our Patreon, (laughs) that's over there existing. Please go check it out. We throw stuff up there uh, (sighs) every week. And as I get through this surgery and I recover... Um, we're going to be doing a lot more fun things on Patreon oh, yeah. in 2024 because this is our last recorded episode I of the year. I was literally just looking at the calendar yeah. to being like, is that true? Yes. Next, next week, week. So by the time you guys hear this, because we're recording it early, mm-hmm. this will be the last podcast before Christmas. And then we're going to figure yes. out if we're going to put up like a best of or if we're just fully taking a week off. Uh, but yeah happy holidays i hope you are stuffing your face yeah. having all of the soup having all of the quality time with your friends and family and yes. dogs yes there it is oh, that's nice this got weird 